Standard of care. This is one of the more significant aspects of the design professional contract, one that we must pay particular attention to. Owners seem to be more and more often requiring a perfection type standard. Now professional liability of course is limited to negligent acts, errors, and omissions. But owners sometimes include language in their contracts that would require the design professional to perform to a standard of care that's greater than what is generally accepted. Uh, for example, a, a clause that I've seen in a couple contracts reads as follows. Quote, design professional represents that its services will be performed in a manner consistent with the highest standards of care, diligence, and skill exercised by a nationally recognized consulting firm for similar services. Close quote. Now, a clause like that one that requires the highest standard of care goes beyond what a court would impose at common law because the, the law of the land, if you will, in courts throughout the United States is that design professionals are held to a standard of care that similar design professionals under similar circumstances, similar projects, similar budget, similar locality would provide on a project and they're not held to a perfection standard so when you agree to this highest you're no longer able to defend yourself with an expert witness who's testifying to well here's what you know nine out of ten engineers would have done here's what the typical architect would have done the standard instead becomes well, what would this real uh, oddball highest possible standard be and we don't know what that is until somebody comes in and testifies so it's really um, something that would prevent us from getting a summary judgment. And it's something that would cause us to have liability that we're not going to be insured for. So we need to strike it from the contract. The AIA B101 is a standard of care provision. And the provision is an excellent one and I really uh, recommend that uh, if you're not already using this standard, please take a look at it. And if an owner gives you a contract that has a standard that's greater than this or different from this, use this to revise that language. The AIA language reads as follows. When you see a clause that goes beyond the normal standard, you might simply add to the end of the standard of care clause a statement that the contract is not intended to increase or guarantee or warrant that the design professional uh, is going to be perfect. And an example of such a clause would be something like this, quote, no warranty or guarantee, either expressed or implied, is made or intended by this agreement, close quote. Now, I use that type of language when I can't get a project owner to agree to remove the highest language, or perhaps they have language that says that you're going to be held to a standard of trust and confidence. Well, that sounds like fiduciary duty. Or perhaps it says you're going to design uh, for the fitness of the intended project or it's going to be merchantable. That's uniform commercial type code language. That would be warranty language. I try to strike all that out of the contract, but if the owner won't agree to it, then try to add this sentence in and it sort of alleviates those problems by clarifying in one sentence that you have no warranties. Again, my, my language is, quote, no warranty or guarantee, either express or implied, is made or intended by this agreement. I particularly use that language when I see in a contract that we have perhaps a reasonable standard of care in, in one article, but then scattered all around the contract, the owner has placed these little uh, gotchas where it looks like you're warranting one thing or guaranteeing another thing. In this way, it's sort of a catch-all. It takes care of all those little hidden gems all over the contract, I hope, by having it in one place saying there are no warranties.